Hey guys, welcome to the Endurance Finals. This match is going to be between, it's I believe the first set of games, between Megopoly and Racquetball. Unfortunate for Racquetball, because Megopoly is a pretty heavy favorite. He did really well in the Standard Brood uh, section of the tournament. And he's an A- player on iCup, so a little bit intimidating. We'll see if Racquetball's up for it. It's going to be on BGH, and that could really play into Racquetball's favor. Uh, let me kind of give you guys, just so you guys know, you're like, BGH, huh? Um, the Endurance Finals format was, the entire tournament was supposed to be a mix, actually. We actually had a UMS portion, but due to low uh, participation, we kind of uh, mixed it out. So the format of it is fastest or BGH to start depending on either coin flip or mutual decision. The second match is on a standard Brood War map, and it's a loser's choice. So they, always, they I guess you can practice one like esoteric map like Fao and get an advantage that way if you want to throw the first match. But then the last match is on whatever wasn't played uh, fastest or BGH. So kind of a, a general all uh, throw up and twist and kind of, yeah, just general podge to kind of celebrate the 10 year anniversary. Anyway, uh, Racquetball, yeah, he's going to have his, his work cut out for him. Really good player, but Megopoly, again, A, uh, A minus player. Although he was, his MO was really through the first round cheese. But I do know that he's completely unfamiliar with the, with both fastest and BGH, so that could really play into Racquetball's favor. Unfortunately for Racquetball, it looks like he's scouting the wrong direction. He's going to come across Megopoly's uh, base last. But a lot of opportunity for cheese considering the large scouting pattern. The question is, is uh, again, scouting for Megopoly on, on a map like BGH, things like that. Anyway, we'll see how he adjusts. Uh, point being is, is I don't think Racquetball is completely outclassed. I think he is a very good player, but he's definitely going to have his work cut out for him. And I think Megopoly did choose Terran on this map. Uh, looks like he's going to go for a pretty standard uh, Rax gas opening, pretty standard anti-Protoss uh, sort of action. It looks like on the opposite end, we're seeing a pretty standard gateway uh, gas combo. So anyway, uh, donations are going to be up, I believe, until the 28th. Current top donation is still $250 if you go to sc2gg.com backslash endurance and just click on that widget. You can donate. Please donate 10 or $20 uh, to Child's Play because that's the entire point of this tournament. Uh, yeah, special thanks, and we've already raised over $1,200. I'm hoping that'll go up a little bit. Uh, I don't know how much higher we can get it uh, before the 29th, which is the 10th year anniversary of Brood War. But special thanks to everybody who donated, um, and, and just everybody who participated in general, uh, particularly uh, guys like Megopoly and Racquetball. So really class acts, I think, uh, in general. Cybernetic score going up on this end. So it's actually kind of playing more like a standard map. We're seeing the factory uh, go down, uh, and Megopoly starting to do scouting. I don't know if you realize this was an eight spawn map. Racquetball, and I love the kind of, you get the smiley face in the middle and the kind of octopus pattern whenever you see this kind of scattering, uh, scouting pattern. It's kind of fun. Uh, it looks like he's going to come to 12 o'clock location. He's also scouting the round direction, so both players a little bit uh, in a bad situation. It looks like a bad scouting situation starting. Second gateway down now for Racquetball. Racquetball's also got a psycho up. He's playing this much like uh, a standard Brood War map uh, as well, and it looks like he's going to come around and find the last spot, so he's going to have a definitive, I'm sure he's going to be exasperated, have finally be like, Fah. finally figured out where where he's at, and it looks like we're going to see a, a quick expansion off factory with no front door seal, with uh, only a single gas. Actually, it looks like there's more uh, SCVs being put back on gas, but he, I think he does have the minerals. It does look like he's setting up uh, for a fast expansion. So right now, um, starting to push out, but he doesn't have a scout at all really to push any direction, and it looks like maybe he has an idea now. I guess he's just pushing out in the scouting pattern. There, that SCV going to get hit, and he doesn't really have enough to push. Looks like he's got four Marines putting down that machine shop now, um, and he's got more. I guess he feels uh, yeah, switching it off just maybe to throw off that scout, so keeping one SCV on gas early and then switching to uh, three SCV on gas just so if the later scout comes in, you can throw a little bit off. I think that might be the uh, intelligence pattern or what he was doing right there just to kind of be a little bit tricksy. Uh, we'll see if that is in fact the case momentarily. That SCV scout trying to get out. He did get a pretty good spot inside Racquetball's base. Looks like he's going to get killed as he's coming out though. And it's just four Marines uh, and an SCV on that front door. Additional Marines being uh, produced and it looks like a tank. Uh, so actually we are going to see a pretty standard fake expand. So a tank and Vulture alongside with the five Marines and he, oh, 
honestly, uh, I think Racquetball's in good position for this. He's already engaging this uh, with his three Dragoons, and he should have more Dragoons coming, and that's going to halt this pretty effectively. So Megapoli trying to regather his forces with <laughs> that front Dragoon, uh, almost taken out. Racquetball starting to back up, but he's going to have two, uh, two more Dragoons, and it looks like range in just a second to help deal with this. So uh, Megapoli is going to have to hold up short, I think. Uh, and it looks like, yeah, getting another good whack at another Dragoon, but now it's five Dragoons, and I think that's uh, going to be enough. A mine being planted uh, off late, and I think Racquetball does have the micro to deal with this. Took out the Vulture. Three mines have been planted, though, uh, and that's going to basically stop both attacks short. So the mine's going to protect that front door, and that's going to allow uh, Megapoli to get his secondary up. Uh, in the meantime, just a bunch of Marines and tanks on the front door, and it looks like they're well, going up and taking a couple free hits at that Dragoon. Uh, Dragoon's pushing up and getting free hits uh, against that Siege tank in the meantime. But uh, and it looks like we have three gateways down, a fourth gateway going down now. Uh, Citadel of a Dune, so we might be seeing either Zealot Speed or probably, yeah, it looks like we're going to see some DT action going on. Uh, and an anti matter pylon already in the line. Uh, and uh, no second gas taken at this stage, I don't think, by either player. Yeah, second gas hasn't been taken uh, by either player. Second factory going down. And it uh, looks like a vulture trying to sneak through, but immediately getting picked off. Racquetball in a pretty good contained situation right now. So it looks like he's going to be kind of in a contain. We'll see. He doesn't have anything to do with the mines, though. So he's going to be completely out in the dark, taking, uh, doing a good job picking off that initial mine. Bunker on that front door to help defend against these dragoons in the meantime. But we'll see uh, if he produces a good amount. Looks like he is producing zealots, but he's going to have to rely mostly on zealots uh, to press forward and be aggressive and, and do some mine clearing for him while these Dark Templar push uh, through that front door. And if he uses a really good uh, micro combination of using those zealots to clear and using those, uh, those dragoons uh, for support to do some mine clearing as well, those Dark Templar could be very, very effective. Uh, and at this stage, it looks like two tanks being set over that mineral. And I, I think Megapoli does have a pretty good idea of how this map works. He's gonna, uh, He's got those siege tanks over the edge so he can hit any reinforcements coming across. So Racquetball is going to have to be careful in his troop transfer otherwise that happens uh, ends up losing a zealot actually to that right there and a uh, tanks being set at bridge side and it looks like a dragoon gonna get picked off for free almost getting picked off for free as well um, and we'll see how well this so a pretty a pretty damaged zealot and we'll see if that damaged zealot can do some mine clearing for these dark templar pushing up there's only going to be one of them so he's going to have his work cut out for him so he's got about five uh, well actually really just two mines those three mines to take care of uh, to kind of open up that front door just kind of uh, getting a, a pattern. He's got two of those mines down, and now the Dark Templar are being set in, sent in, and Megapoli does not have any... It uh, looks like he's getting a CompSat station now, but does not really have a, an effective amount of, of detection at this stage. He's got that second CompSat back here. He does have the Academy. But that's it. That's going to be all of his scouting at this stage. Uh, and those uh, <laughs> the Dark Templar going up and taking down those tanks on the lower end. Looks like a mine going off, damaging one of the Dragoons, but uh, Racquetball going to take this opportunity now that those tanks are down to push up uh, and do some damage to this barrack. Megapoli bringing all of his SCVs off the line to try to help defend this. Uh, it looks like a CompSat going off. Going to be able to take out that Dark Templar, but he's going to end up losing a lot of SCVs. Uh, and yeah, taking a lot of damage. It looks like he lost a lot of his tanks, basically all of his Goliaths at this stage. Uh, and yeah, basically he just lost a lot in that attack. And now the range on the bunker is just going to start sailing it. It's going to force a lot of these SCVs off the line to keep repairing it. And that's his only defense is, is this in mind. His secondary is looking a little bit like a mess right here. Uh, for you these vultures back here, this bunker up on the front door. If he starts mining this gas, it's going to create... Uh, I really don't like this expansion because of that. When you get the gas and the, the SAV is going across, it creates a little bit of a troop uh, problem, reinforcement. Uh, Zealot's coming up to assist to do some one do, do some more mine clearing and all, for those uh, Dark Templar and also uh, to push up and be uh, and do damage like that, be harassing. It looks like they're going to continue to push up. Uh, looks like one Dragoon already taken out by those mines. Ooh! Uh, three Zelts getting taken out by the mines. Looks like Racquetball's expanded in the meantime. He's going to take that 6 o'clock location immediately. Uh, now that he feels like he's got a lead and got some leeway and that he's done enough uh, macro damage that he's taken out enough uh, vultures and things like that, moving that Dark Templar very cleverly out of the way, he's just going to go uh, straight, straight to carriers at this stage of the game, just trying to pick away at that commsat station. Tanks slowly starting to push to the secondary and Megapoli once again uh, trying to take this uh, second base. Another commsat going off and a lot of Dark Templar pushing in now. Uh, and it looks like going to be able to lead mines. Ooh, a lot of them getting taken out, but able uh, to clear some mines and able to take out a tank. So I think that's still a fairly fair exchange. And able to continue to do damage uh, on this commsat uh, station, on this secondary here. 
with just two Dragoons and a, and a Dark Templar here and just continue Dark Templar press, he doesn't actually have anything to defend. Uh, if Megopoly decided to press at this stage, honestly, uh, with uh, some additional tanks with some mines here, ooh, mine getting led uh, <laughs> into, uh, let's see if it damaged that, yeah, did good damage on its own Goliath. It decided to press, he's only got four Dragoons to go through uh, and that Dark Templar to basically press into Racquetball's base, but he doesn't have any mobile detection is the issue. These Dark Templar are really giving Racquetball a strong uh, map advantage, contr uh, map control advantage here. Um, more Dragoons trying to get press, and he's just continuing to hammer away at this, and the secondary is just uh, continuing to be assailed. Uh, Vulture's still up, and megopoly has got to feel very, very pressured inside of his base. He's got three factories pumping at this stage, four factories pumping at this stage. Uh, looks like he's also getting a weapons one upgrade, but really hasn't been able to get uh, all that satisfactory production. Oh, man! Uh, mine going off. I'm not even sure what was all in that explosion, uh, but not not helpful at all for Megopoly. He's just been under constant assault uh, by these Dark Templar, by these uh, by these Dragoons out on the front door. Still no observer though to take care of these mines. Keep in mind Racquetball's done all of this uh, with just Dark Templar and with Zelts and it looks like an empty comps out there. Uh, 6 o'clock location completely producing now. Looks like the Stargate is in fact up as well as the Fleet Beacon uh, but not producing anything yet. A barrack uh, in between Megopoly's land 